So today's message is entitled Eden's Mandate Obey and Worship in His Holy Temple. And the passage that we're looking at today is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 to 17. And I read The Lord God planted the garden towards the east. In Eden, and there he placed the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord caused the, to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now a river flowed out of Eden to the water to water the garden, and from there it divided and became four rivers. The names of the first is Fishon. It flows around the whole land of Havilah, for it is where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. The Vilnium and the onyx stones are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris. It flows to the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. <clears throat> then the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to cultivate it and keep it. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in that day that you eat from it you shall surely die. <clears throat> As we continue the story of creation, we saw that the creation story in Genesis and up uh, Genesis chapter one and up to Exodus, the first part, verse one and three. The culmination of that is day seven, well, day seven. But in day six, we saw that God assigning man to be His image better, to represent God to the world to do the very same function of God of subduing and ruling that was the mandate of man to rule and subdue as God's <clears throat> image better they were created in the image and likeness of God to represent God to the world that is our our purpose and function. We Christians are called to represent God to the lost world. Yet day seven, as we look into that, when God rested, it is not just resting. We realize that day seven was the culmination day of the creation account. Because when we say that God rested, that means God was enthroned. It was a temple imagery. Wherein when a temple is inaugurated, the inauguration of the temple takes seven days. And on that seventh day, they would bring the Ark of the Covenant or their deities into that temple. It is only when they bring that Ark of the Covenant or that deity inside that temple that building, that the building becomes a temple. So even if the building is erected and the ceremonies has not started and the Ark of the Covenant is, in that, is not in that building, that building is still not that temple. So the combination of that is when the Ark of the Covenant rested in the temple. So the imagery of God here is He created the whole universe as a temple imagery and on the seventh day he rested and ruled over the old whole earth that is the imagery that God is <coughs> enthroned that is the story of creation the enthronement of God and the rule of God and we say that all the imagery in the temple symbolizes the universe that's why the name of the temples are names of the universe and, and there, deity resides. Deity rested, meaning deity rules in that temple. Then we saw last week when God formed Adam. 
from thus symbolizing what from thus you came from thus you will return that man is mortal man was not created immortal he was created mortal that's why from the very start God which we saw we will see today created the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil the tree of life and we will see that was the tree that allowed Adam to prolong his life now let's go now to verse 8 as we continue then the Lord planted a garden towards the east in Eden and there he placed the man whom he had formed you know when we say garden nowadays a lot of things comes to mind including amusement bush garden di ba? And, and, and garden normally are, are common features of castles are common features <clears throat> of temples in fact one of the known let me read an Assyrian uh, text uh, Assyrian uh, study it says in the Assyrian world the garden reflected the glory of the sovereign the huge park laid out in the shadow of royal palaces which their rich variety of species evokes the breath and sweat of the realm gardens are supposed to reflect the glory of the sovereign was the belief of the Assyrian Empire the Assyrian world so again we're trying to look at Genesis from a ancient Near Eastern understanding how would they see this that's why there's a famous garden right right the, the hanging garden built by Nebuchadnezzar it's attached to what the the castle and temples and castles normally has the Versailles garden though I haven't seen that and the kings what they would do there also is they would receive guests and the, the splendid the splendor of the garden tries to show the splendidness of the king the bigger the garden the more splendid it is. So we saw in Genesis chapter 1 that the whole universe is God's domain, God's temple. And then in Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, we see that God now enthrones when he rested, when he entered the world, he was enthroned here on earth. What Genesis chapter 2 tells us now is where is God enthroned particularly in the universe and we see that he is enthroned in Eden <clears throat> go to Ezekiel chapter 28 please So if I may read verse 8 first, then the Lord God planted a garden towards the east in Eden, and there he placed the man whom he had formed. The word Eden means what? Abundant of water supply. It is a description of the land. It is abundant of water supply. That's why in Ezekiel chapter 28. Verse 2, it says, In the pride of your heart, you say, I am God. I sit, in th I sit on the throne of a God in the heart of the seas. So the imagery normally of where God resides is a place abundant with water. Remember, last week, the imagery is what? The, the, the imagery was desert. 
Man was created from dust in the desert where there is no shrubs and no plants and there is water underneath and the description there is a desert scene and now the scene is Eden in contrast wherein there is much water you know I haven't been to Israel but I was told between Israel and Egypt is just a river and on the left side is Israel on the right side is Egypt and they say ah, have you been there right have you seen that river but on the, on the left side is green Israel is full of greenery they say is that, is that true and on Egypt it's all desert even though it's just separated by a river and the image there is that it's, it is because God resides there. That's why it is lush. That's why it is bountiful. That's why it is beautiful. God was contrasting that. And that is very common, as I said, in ancient times. That the temples and the palaces was adjoined to the garden. Go to Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51 verse 3 says Indeed the Lord will comfort Zion he will comfort all her waste place and her wilderness he will make like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and sound of melody Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 13 says you were in Eden the garden of God every precious stone was your covering the ruby the topaz the diamonds the berlix the onyx the jasper the, the lapis la, lazuli the turquoise and the emeralds and the gold the workmanship of your setting and sockets washed in you on the day that you created they were prepared Eden is the garden of God. It is where God resides and meets Adam. As we, we know the man, God is everywhere. But in this story, it is in Eden specifically that God meets Adam. Verse 9, Genesis chapter 2 verse 9. Out of the ground, the Lord caused every tree that is pleasing to, the, pleasing to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. By the way, um, the garden that God created technically is not in Eden technically that's why it is it's in a sense it eden is a bigger area and the garden is either within eden or adjoining most commentator says it's probably meaning adjoining to eden though that eden that place is sometimes referred as eden why do we say that before we go to verse 9 in verse 10 it says now a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden. You see? The river flowed out of Eden to water what? The garden. And there it, it divided and became four rivers. So the word Eden is sometimes in the Bible describes the geographic area as a whole and sometimes specifically parang parang Quezon City let's say uh, Manila huh? yeah, Metro Manila so may Manila as uh, basta the big Manila and the small Manila <coughs> so so that you don't get confused when the word Eden is is mentioned um, so verse 9 says 